begin. I, every time you clap, I just imagine you just clapping like a seal. Like just missing your hands, your fingertips not lining up. Just oh, try, that's exactly how I'm clapping. Trying to avoid like, uh, hitting yourself in the face. Yeah, that's how I clap. <laughs> um, I was never taught how to properly clap, so I'm kind of just winging it. You remember, <laughs> you remember your buddy trying to tell me he doesn't know how to laugh back when we were kids? Oh, he forgot how to laugh. Yeah. Because he, like, taught himself how to laugh, like, uh, what was it? Oh, freaking a Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. <laughs> oh, man. And then he forgot how to laugh. And so he says. <laughs> was, I don't buy it. Yeah, that doesn't, that didn't even sound true at the time, and we were eight. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Uh, this is the first time I've seen this. Same here. I heard it was great. I had. I heard nothing about it. I didn't know anything about it going into it. I was super excited. I was really looking forward to watching this. And it's not very good. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed. Um, don't get me wrong. It had, it had funny moments. Mm-hmm. But as a whole... It, it felt like it thought it was a lot smarter and yeah. cl- more clever than, than it really was. Yeah. It, yeah. Every and time they said something, it felt like, I'm really I think clever. that was Robert Downey Jr.'s fault. Not necessarily mm-hmm. his fault, but the fact that he's the narrator. Yeah. And I was like, it's okay. It's, it's not that good. I think, um, I think the issue is actually yeah. Shane Black, the director. The uh, director. yeah. Because you listen. To all the characters, they all talk, they all have the same voice, right? They all uh-huh. talk exactly the same. They all are exactly the same type of sarcastic and yep. witty. And it just, it was like, it just felt like one person talking to themselves. Um, one thing that I did enjoy actually was Val Kilmer. Uh, I, I liked his character. I thought he was good. Uh huh. This is like right before Val Kilmer really took a nosedive. Um, you can see it in his face. He's a little fluffier. You know, he's not, he's not Top Gun, yeah. Val Kilmer. Yeah, not. He's not Batman. But I thought he was good. Uh, but that's really it. Didn't he get like really sick or something? I think, so he got really big. Yeah. And then he got really pale. And now he is, I, I, I was just looking at a picture of him today. He looks very sick. Well, I thought he got really big because he got really sick. I think he got really big because he's a severe alcoholic. Oh, well, that'll do it. And he just drank a lot. <laughs> I definitely thought the girl in this movie was Amy Smart. It is not. Michelle Mon- Oh, Michelle, Mon- Michelle Monaghan? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> My bad. Jeez Louise. Um, so why don't you break down the story? Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. I'll break it down the best that I can. To be honest, I still don't know if I fully understand everything I, that happened. I have no idea what happened at the end. Just well, fair warning okay. now. I'm so, so confused by the, very, the ending. The, when he goes and visits the old man and punches him, I have no idea why that happened. Oh, no, I understood that part. All right. When we get to it, you'll have to explain I, it. Okay. All right, so this is this is what I got. So Robert Downey Jr. is a thief. Yeah. And he is robbing a toy store looking for a specific toy. For his kid. Um, it was Turbo Man. He was trying to beat Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> for it. Yeah. So he's he's breaking into the place after after hours. Uh, something accidentally sets off the alarm, so they have to run. As they are fleeing, a woman... A random woman from like a balcony is like, "Hey, stop stealing stuff! I'm gonna shoot you." And yeah, that was shoots. crazy, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> uh, she shoots and it hits Robert Downey Jr. in the arm. I think it goes through him. Yeah, and it hits his friend right and mm-hmm. knocks him down. And then the sh- cops show up, so he bails. He leaves his friend behind, and he runs and he stumbles into like an audition uh, for a movie 
And so they don't understand what's going on. So they think he's there to just audition. So he kind of goes with it. And then the role that he's up for is like similar to pretty much what he just did. And he abandoned his friend. So he got really emotional about it. But then I couldn't tell if he was actually emotional about it or if he was just really running with it. Uh, but they liked it. So now he's an actor. Yeah. And he was way too on board with that right away. He was just yeah. like, he just acted after that point. He was like, yeah, I'm an actor. I'm not out of so, place. Yeah, I do. I, I am an actor now. Yeah. Like th- this was my big break. <laughs> <laughs> never, he never felt like overwhelmed by the situation. He was just like, yeah, I can do this. I can, I got that audition like, coming up. It's not gonna almost be. as if like it's not even the first time. <laughs> yeah. This just happens in New York. Maybe, maybe that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> we don't know what yeah, it's like it, in New York. New York life is very different. Uh, so then we fast forward a little while. I'm not even sure what the time difference is. He's at a Hollywood party. And he sees uh, Michelle Monaghan. Mm-hmm. He wants to be about her. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> whatever. Uh, <laughs> he, he's told that he's being... Uh, he's up for a detective role. And he's being paired with Val Kilmer, who is a private investigator. Mm-hmm. So they are going to work together so he can, I don't know, understand what it means to be a detective. Uh, Val Kilmer also is, is, is gay. What do they call him? Gay, gay Perry. Perry, that's what it was. Didn't even say that he's not gay anymore, but he just goes with it. Well, I think he was lying. Oh, okay. That's true. He, yeah, every, you never know. Val Kilmer is such a good actor. He got me. <laughs> everything, freaking Gay Perry. Everything everyone says in this is being sarcastic. Yeah, that's true. Which is, it's not, uh, it's not really fun in that sense. Like, I think you can have one sarcastic for me, character. Val Kilmer is, is fine. Yeah, like that. Like uh-huh. he could be that guy, right? Yep. But you're, you're right. Everyone is kind of sarcastic. So. If everyone is sarcastic, then it almost feels like no one is sarcastic and they're just mean. Yeah. And they're just jerks. But he is also pretty mean to Robert Downey Jr., but it's funny. Yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense, right? Like that, that follows, that tracks. Robert Downey Jr. should have been afraid and like overwhelmed the entire time. And he never, other than being high, he never seemed incapable of handling the situation. Yeah, pretty much. Well, she should have. Uh, okay. He should have been terrified. So Val Kilmer uh, tells him where he can find Michelle Monaghan mm-hmm. uh, at the Domino Room. Well, he saves her, right, from being molested. Oh, that's – but – okay. So, yeah, he he's kind of watching her and then she f- passes out in a room. Another dude – She had to be roofied or something. Like why is yeah, she I'm, passing I, out so hard, so quickly, so simply? She – she is a severe alcoholic. Cannot handle her liquor. Uh, so she passes out. Some dude comes in. He's trying to get up on, trying to be about her. <laughs> I don't and, know if uh, that's being about her anymore. Uh, I don't yeah, think, I don't think you, you can... don't know what the definition of that is. <laughs> maybe not. So Robert Downey Jr. pretty much tells the guy to take a hike and then says, let's fight. And then they go outside, and he just beats the crap out of him. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. gets the crap beat out of him. Yeah, he gets the crap beat out of him, because he's not Iron Man yet. And he doesn't <laughs> know how to fight. It was... His speech, too, was like, oh, let's go outside. It's past my bedtime. This is going to end yeah, in tears. Um, and I was like, what, what kind of line is this? And I think the point was to be... Like, he's, he's not good at being tough. But Robert Downey Jr. played it like he was good at being tough. Yeah. And it like it just it didn't it didn't work for me when it it jump cut to him just getting beat up. One, because you couldn't really tell right away who was getting beat up, so the that kind of deflated yeah, it took me the, a minute. the joke. And then two, it was kind of too built up to where what? it like just I don't know, it just fell flat like Oh uh, yeah, that was. Well, that the, makes it's, sense. I still don't get it. It wouldn't be any different, like if Robert Downey Jr. had been the one to beat up the other guy. I'm like, what's he gonna be like? I told you it was past my bedtime. <laughs> yeah, well, that part was dumb. 
But even just but the now joke it's of, also past your bedtime. Because <laughs> it like, was what I don't get it. It was supposed to subvert your expectations of here's our hero. He's going to save yeah. the girl, but he gets beat up. That's kind of the main joke, but it it just doesn't really work because they they build it up too much to the point where it's like, oh yeah, he's definitely not going to win. Yeah. And then he gets beat uh, up and he's <laughs> bleeding all over the place. And uh, uh, Val Kilmer shows up. He's like, "Hey, you all right?" He's like, "Yeah, I got to learn how to fight one of these days." I was like, "Is that really your reaction to all that?" Like. You got beat up Again, pretty bad. Because this is something that happens often. Getting beat up and becoming an actor because he stumbles into an audition. Yeah. Well, he also gets his finger chopped off at one point and hardly oh, reacts sh- to that at all. Yeah, we'll get to that. That was <laughs> that was wild. Um so he finds Michelle Monaghan at the part or at the bar. They start talking. She's she's not really interested. Uh, does he know who she is at that point? No. He's attracted to her because he recognizes her, though. But he can't place her. I feel like, hmm, I'm thinking back. You look familiar, but I can't place it. How many people do I know named Harmony? Yeah. I that... wonder what the chances are that this person with a very unique name is also this person that I do know from my childhood named Harmony. For not even, it would make more sense if it was just that beginning clip where he tries to cut her in half. Yeah. But he talks about going through high school and how she was sleeping around with everyone yeah, but him. Yeah, as if they hadn't seen each other since uh, the saw, you know, the magician incident. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. I did know that little girl from Forever Go, and then also for the next fifteen years we were best <laughs> friends. <laughs> Which I would I would imagine that once you get to where you're like about through high school, you're gonna look like how you look, you know, when you're also thirty. Yeah. Right. You're not gonna change so much that you're not gonna recognize someone. Yeah. Oh, other, unless you, you like that person I knew twelve years ago. Unless you gain or lose a ton of weight, you pretty much are gonna look consistent. Like if you stay about the same size, you're gonna be recognizable. You know, for. If you knew them in junior high and you saw them 20 years later, you're still going to be able to recognize them. Yeah, exactly. And so that that was a little crazy. Yeah. That they that was so hard for them to well, she, know each other. Well, she knew him. She remembered him. Oh, okay. The whole time? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And uh, Well, that I, makes a little sense. Because he, he finally gives up and he's like, you seriously don't remember me? And then she let, lets him know who she is. Yeah. Uh, okay, so they reminisce about old times. Um, and then I believe the next thing is when he's with Val Kilmer, right? Well, they he invites her back to his hotel room, but then ends up sleeping with her friend. Oh, which, right, that he doesn't remember. Yeah, and she is understandably upset with him for that. He's Jeez. like... I, I was too drunk, you know? It, yeah. it doesn't count. <laughs> and, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it just, and the, the jokes were, uh, too forced to be funny, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, like, it was, uh, they, they tried really hard to make the jokes work. Like, I feel like the jokes were written before the, they got to the point. They're like, oh, let's do this. Let's do that. This will be funny. Let's just make that The work. guy thought of a joke, and then he built a movie around it. <laughs> Basically. Um, Yeah, so basically, uh, I guess we'll move on. He's with Val Kilmer. They are, Val Kilmer's been hired by uh, a mysterious woman to go spy on another guy. Yeah. Who was also at the party, and he is play. I'm trying to remember who played him. Uh, I don't remember who was that. Uh, was you talking about the Dexter guy, Harlan Dexter? Yes. Uh, Corbin Brunson. Oh, Corbin Brunson. Yeah, from Major League. That's who it was. Uh, okay. So the they follow his vehicle or a vehicle that's camped up there it, they lose the vehicle down by the lake and then all of a sudden the vehicle is back 
and it uh, falls into the or flies into the lake. Robert Downey Jr. assumes that there's someone in the vehicle, so he goes to save him. Val Kilmer is convinced that there's no one in it. And so this is where I get confused because then Val Kilmer goes in and he's able to get the woman out of the trunk? Yeah. How did he know there was a body in the trunk? Well, he says, that sound, and then he jumps in the water. So he hears her in there. And she was still alive? I think so. Because I'm pretty sure that they had said something like she her was... Her neck was broken. Her neck, like, and she she was dead before she was put in the trunk or something. Yeah. But then also, he shoots her in the head? Yeah, so he tries to shoot the lock underwater and ends uh-huh. up shooting her in the face. And this... So had, what if she wasn't dead yet? <laughs> then she would be dead now. I know, but it would have been Val Kilmer <laughs> is the murderer. Yeah. Um... Well, that's what they were afraid of. That's what it was going to look like. Uh, but so he shoots the gun underwater. Guns don't shoot underwater. Bullets don't. Like, if me and you were in a pool together and we were five feet away, I could shoot a gun at you underwater and you not have any issue. More than likely, yeah. Well, the water is it's too resistant. Too resistant. It'll, it'll slow the bullet down to nothing. Well, and it will... It'll change directions. It'll do all kinds of different... A lot of different things can happen. But... But I'm saying, yes. like, there's not... No, that's not... <laughs> it won't... It can't... The it, physics aren't Even there. if it hit you, it would just fall down. It wouldn't puncture anything. You don't think so? I know. All right. <laughs> if you say so. I'll have to take your word on it. Uh, okay, so... So they, he gets the body out. They're looking at it, and basically Val Kilmer's like, "Yeah, we gotta go because this looks like it's us." And then Robert Downey Jr.'s like, "Oh, remember that really special gun? I tossed it. <laughs> I'm a fool." That was, Val Kilmer's. I, I thought Val that Kilmer's was funny. really mad. Yeah, hey, no, that was that. Because I, I liked when he was telling him to, to look up the <laughs> the definition of idiot in the dictionary. <laughs> He's like, you know what you would find if you look up the definition idiot? He's like, what a picture of me. He's like, no, you would find the definition of idiot, which is what you are. <laughs> but so Robert Downey Jr. is afraid uh, of getting in trouble for what happened in New York. And so he's like, I can't, we can't even call the police. So he throws the gun in the water to try to hide <laughs> the evidence. Yeah. And Val Kilmer is like, why did you do that? And he's like, don't worry, no one will find it. It's like they're going to pull the car out of the water and search the water. You don't think they're going to find the gun when they do that? And now this girl has a bullet from a my bullet gun bullet in, her, in her head. That is a $2,000 gun that's going to be so easily traceable. <laughs> it was like a custom-made gun, right? <laughs> yeah. From his mom. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so, yeah. So they – oh, and at the same time, there are two men who see them. And masks. And I would, yeah, I would think that if I'm those guys and I see these other two guys like hanging out at the crime scene, uh-huh. you got to kill them right there, right? You don't just like walk off like, huh, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Like, at, once they see you, you probably like, oh, we got to do something. But when you see them trying to save the girl in the car, I don't. Do you, I think you just let it go. Because, right? look, I think the, the the longer it takes the police to find this crime scene, uh-huh. the better off your chances are. Yeah, that's You true. don't want these guys calling the police and them digging it all up immediately. No. And at the same time saying, oh, yeah, and also we saw two guys, you know, watching us. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I mean, would say, no, kill it, them and throw them in there with them. It, it would probably help. Like... Because you have uh, Robert Downey Jr., who just got in from New York, this mm-hmm. private eye from Los Angeles, and this random girl from the Midwest somewhere, right? Yeah. All dead together in a car at the bottom of a lake. You'd be like, where is the connection to any of this? Why are all these yeah. people together and dead? Who well, who wants to kill all saying. of these people? I said, I was telling Chris, I was like, can you imagine being the police when you stumble upon this crime scene? Like, how do you even begin to piece together <laughs> what happened here? Um, 
So yeah, that was a that was a choice they made, I guess. Uh, but whatever, they flee. Yeah, and uh, Val Kilmer takes Robert Downey Jr. to his hotel. Which and, I I, thought, uh, I like this scene when he's dropping him off. The, this was funny. So yeah, like I said, this movie had its moments. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. forgets his phone in his car and it starts ringing. So Val Kilmer comes back, and it's the police saying, "Hey, uh, your friend Harmony is committed suicide." Uh, but we need to rule out uh, foul play, blah, blah, blah. So Robert Downey Jr. is distraught because this is his his old friend and someone he just recently saw. So he's like he's like upset. Val Kilmer just wants to leave. Yeah. But he's like trying to be sympathetic. He's like, sorry, I got to uh, go. Then, he keeps like, tapping him on the Robert shoulder. Robert Downey Jr. like sits down up against his car. It's like, I got to go now. He's like, okay. He's like, no, but like I got to go. He's like, okay, go. He's like, no. And he just like <laughs> he just pushes reaches out off. and pushes him off the car. <laughs> yeah, so, I, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. I really enjoyed the two of them together when yeah. Val Kilmer was like in control and annoyed by Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Like those, yeah. those were the best moments that felt real. Everything yeah. else felt too forced. Like the dynamics of everything and the choices were like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like the... What we're about to get to. I'll let you get to it. Uh, so he goes up to his room and he's he's real upset. Uh, but then she shows up. Uh, she's back from the dead. It turns out it was her sister and not her. She had stolen her credit cards and then committed suicide. So the police thought it was her. Yeah. Um, so she's there and he's like, all right, you hang out here. We'll figure all this stuff out. Um, because she at this point thinks that he is a real, uh, private detective. Detect- yeah. So she wants him to figure out what happened to her sister because she doesn't believe that it was a suicide. Yeah. And he so goes he says, along with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then he goes to the bathroom. This was and he dumb. Sees, I hated every second of this. Uh, when he finds the dead body and then he pees on it. Yep. I thought it was kind of funny. No, it was, it was so stupid. Uh, so the dead body is back. Who turns their hips when you see something in the bathroom? You turn your head. You turn your shoulders the most. You don't turn your hips. Well, the thing is, I'm you don't just always, start peeing I'm all over I'm turning my hips in, in constant. <laughs> I'm in constant motion while I pee. I hardly ever get it into the bowl. You got to stay limber. That's true. And so I'm doing a lot of calisthenics. Just burpees while you're going to pee. <laughs> Lunges, burpees, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. No, and just, then, of course, you got your 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 hips going side to side. Like I thought, it was funny what they did after when he's the Val Kilmer's like, we gotta get rid of him. He's like, I, pe- I peed on her. And Val Kilmer's like, what? Why? Yeah, that, you, why would you pee on a dead person? He's like, it on was an, an accident. already dead person. <laughs> uh, but no, the way that it happened again. Felt so forced, so contrived to hit that joke, you know? Yeah. And so it was just like, yeah, the jokes that you're, you're telling, the punchlines are funny, but your buildups are so contrived that it's not really worth it. Yeah. Uh, so he calls Val Kilmer, tells him to come back. Uh, Val Kilmer comes back to help him dispose of the body. They wrap it up. Uh, and then they take it to the roof. And then throw her over the side into the dumpster, but they miss the dumpster, of course. Uh, so then they go back downstairs. They see uh, Michelle Monaghan is in the lobby. Yeah, or she, she's she 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 hears she the, tells police. the police. Yeah, right. Uh, and she sends him kind of in a different direction. Uh, <laughs> well, we should she, say we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the police were there asking the the bellhops if, oh, is this person staying in this room? And she overhears it. And she's like, oh, actually, he's two floors down. I was just up there and things are crazy. You guys need to get up there in a, in a quick to yeah. distract him. And so she calls him and is like, hey, the police are here. I don't know what's happening, but I figured, you know, you probably don't want them on your case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, we just uh, we both just said the police, and then that was it. And then if you hadn't seen the movie, you had no idea what would happen. 
If you haven't seen the movie, none of what we're saying is going to make sense. That, Anyways. That might be true. Uh, okay, so they're trying to get rid of the body, uh, and then the police show up. So Val Kilmer uh, tries to get with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, he makes him kiss him. Uh, which was, you know, it was pretty funny. And then the cops were like, gross. And then they leave. <laughs> Gay. Gay. Uh, yeah, so then that's when she stumbles upon them and is trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what happened next. Well, he, he doesn't even say it. He's just like, um, yeah, I convinced her that why we were kissing, don't, don't worry about it. Was his narration. You remember that part? Uh, vaguely. It was dumb. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so then... Uh, I don't really remember. I just know the, the, the rest of the movie is trying to figure out exactly what happened. He goes to her house. No, this, so before that, they're about to hook up. At some point, mm. and then she says, "No, I got to tell you something. Remember back in high school, I used to sleep with everybody but you. And then you asked that I don't sleep with like one person. Well, I, I did anyways. Yeah, as his best friend. Yeah. So then he gets really upset and kind of kicks her out. Yeah. Or he leaves. I don't remember kicks where they were at this point. Um." I'm trying to remember what were the circumstances that brought them back together again. So they got back together because... So after he kissed uh, Val Kilmer, he... Why did they end up back together? He goes over there. um... Because this is when the spider thing happened. Oh, (laughs) yeah. But why, why were they together at that point? She got drunk, right? Right. They were at a party. She was working. Right? That's what it was. That's right. She was working at a party. And I don't even... I really don't remember why he was there. I think just to find her. Is he there to see her, right? Mm. Um, I don't even know. Yeah, this, uh, this movie, it's... I don't think we need to go through it scene by scene anymore. It uh it's really kind of boring, oh, honestly. It is. It is. Basically the the rest of the story is Corbin Burnson has a daughter uh-huh. and they are estranged, right? Yeah. So she doesn't even live in the country anymore. And then his wife dies and the daughter is suing him for the estate mm. or part of the estate or whatever it is. So he doesn't like that because he wants the money. So he has another woman who looks kind of like her. His daughter. Uh, and Yeah, looks like his daughter. And enough to trick the public into thinking it's her. Has her come out as the daughter to drop the lawsuit. And now they're good friends again. And then, then he kills her? I guess he has her stashed away at a mental institute. Which, that's where I got really confused about the whole underwear thing. So he kills his daughter. That's the... He kills his actual daughter, right? Right. That That's the girl from the trunk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the underwear thing was weird. That didn't... They're like, it, oh, this makes perfect sense. She must have been in a mental institution because they don't give you underwear there. And part of that was because they're like, oh, she's... In the evangelical scene, so she would, that's not something she would do. Yeah, see, that, it, it, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's dumb. Uh, it was, it was weird and it was dumb. Yeah. Um, so come to find out, he had her killed. Uh, he also had the woman that he had playing his daughter killed. Yep. Uh, so what happened was Michelle Monaghan's sister um so Michelle Monaghan re- told her sister 
this guy in the movie oh, that's right. is our actual dad. Because so their their father was abusive and implied that he may have been sexually abusive to the sister. Okay. So she thought to make things easier that she she told her that hey, this isn't our dad. This other guy's our dad. Gotcha. And that was Corbin Burnson. So you know, fast forward 10, 15 years or whatever, she's grow up, she comes to Los Angeles to try to find her dad mm-hmm. and stumbles upon him hooking up with what appears to be his daughter. Yeah. So she's like, ew. All you know, dads it's gross. are, yeah. Yeah. Rapists. All dads are, try to get with their daughters. Uh. So it really messes her up. So she hires Val Kilmer to follow Corbin Burnson to see if she, to see if he could get the incest captured on tape. Yeah. Uh, and then she just kills herself because she's so distraught yeah. over the whole thing. So she wasn't murdered. She really did kill herself um, because of the, I don't know, the circumstances. She stole Michelle Monaghan's uh, credit card to pay Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It all tied back together. And then there was a weird shootout at the end of the movie. Uh, that was terrible, too. I hated that. That was so dumb. It was really dumb. Him hanging there from the coffin. Yeah, holding on to then, the dead girl's arm. And the gun just magically pops into his hand. And he shoots the bad guy, Corbin Burnson. And he says, oh, magic man, and falls over dead. And the movie is recognizing, like, yeah, we get it. That's dumb, but it's just fun. So go with it. Well, so they, so what they do is they they show that okay, Robert Downey Jr. was a magician as a kid, so mm. obviously he's really good with his hands as adults. He's got a good sleight of hand. Uh, there's already a scene where he snatches a cell phone out of the air, yeah, and you know uses that to alert Michelle Mon- Monaghan to what's happening. So Not I think really they're going a, along the same. That really isn't a magician move, though. That's like. No, Baseball. it's just good hand-eye coordination. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's like, sorry, I'm a magician. <laughs> They're like, oh, I was wondering when I saw you snatch, I was like, I bet this guy's a magician. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, that was really dumb. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, same concept. It shows he can snatch things out of the air. He snatches the gun, shoots Corbin Brinson. Uh, then also shoots the speeding vehicle that is swerving up and down the freeway. <laughs> And then lands directly on top of the vehicle, kills everyone. Michelle Monaghan is like passed out because she jumped off the 10 foot overpass onto the grass. <laughs> yeah. And she kind of like made her way down a little while. She and rolled then a little bit. Out? And she passes no, out and then she calls him and says, Oh, great magic. Someone I saved me from this predicament. <sighs> And oh, which was, was so dumb. her line as a little kid right before he sawed her in half. And, uh, right. it didn't, why did she pass out already? Uh, uh, she was just, I mean, I guess I she, she did just get out of a giant, uh, car crash. Uh, yeah, that's true. She should have never gotten out of the car. She should have been in the car with a head in is... and called him from there. Yeah. Like her um, running down and jumping out doesn't make any sense. No, it was stupid. Yeah. Uh okay, the one thing I do one thing I do want to point out that I thought was funny was when they're at the mental hospital uh-huh. and they have that that orderly in in the back parking lot. Yeah. And he's like he's like all right, he's like I don't know, trying to show him that he's crazy or he means business because they're trying to get him to talk and the guy's not talking yeah. so he's got a revolver and he puts one bullet in and spins it around he's like, do you think puts, i'm serious puts, now <laughs> just shoots the guy in the face and Valcomer's like what are you doing like why did you just do that he's like there was only an eight percent chance of that <laughs> happening he's like eight percent he's like where did you learn math <laughs> So I thought that was pretty funny that yeah because even, even like a little after he's still like trying to rationalize it like no it's it's no eight percent that that was right <laughs> uh, so I thought that was pretty funny yeah uh, but other than that that's the best moment of the movie is when he he when accidentally he, kills the guy <laughs> he shoots that guy like immediately in the face <laughs> he does no, Russian roulette there is another funny one 
Yeah, he Russian roulette, but against the someone in else. his head, he thought it was only eight percent chance of happening. So he was just going to intimidate the guy, yeah. and he kills him instead. <laughs> um, I did like uh, when it was a little further on when they were both tied up and they were torturing Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, and Val, <laughs> Val Kilmer had the gun in his pocket or in his pants. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so he's the Val Kilmer's like. I don't know, taunting the other guy. Yeah, uh, so he's he's electrocuting Robert Downing Jr.'s testicles. And Val yeah. Kilmer is like, oh, you know, you could do that on his chest. You don't have to do it there. I know so, you're oh, doing that you because like you it. enjoy it. Yeah, pretty much trying to rile him up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he shoots the guy through his pants. And then <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. makes some comment like, he's like, oh, he's like, I wasn't sure like if that was like a gay thing. Like if you guys could do that. He's like, it, it threw me off for a second. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, basically it. Robert Downey Jr. wakes up in the hospital after this has all happened. Um, Michelle Monaghan's there. Val Kilmer's still alive because he had gotten shot. So. Yeah. I thought he was dead, but guess not. I did. I did like the book reveal. I thought that was funny. Uh, so Robert Downey oh. Jr. gets shot in the <laughs> yeah, chest. So it, it goes through it. So it basically redoes what happened in the beginning of the movie, except uh, Robert Downey Jr. is the one behind. And so the bullet goes through Val Kilmer and it hits Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. goes and like fights off all these guys, kills all these guys. And, uh, and then collapses, collapses, but he's talking to, to Harmony and she's like, didn't you get shot? And he's like, oh no, no check it out. And he pulls out he's a like, book. Look. He's like the bullet. He's like the book, stop the bullet. And she's like, no, it did. <laughs> it like went through the book. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought that was pretty funny too. Yeah. So like I said, it, it had its moments, mm-hmm. but the, it was just the story was dumb. They, it was sloppy. They, it could have been better. It had potential. Well, um, it, it's got a good cast. If Val Kilmer would have been the only one who was sarcastic, Robert Downey yeah. Jr. should have been more lost in everything. Yeah, um, and I could have done without the narrator. Yeah, the narration was. I just think that took element. away from it because they yeah. kept pausing everything for him to explain what happened. Yeah. Um, and then Michelle but he was talking real fast. He was going back and forth. Yeah. And Michelle yeah, Monaghan I, I didn't care for it. shouldn't have been as capable as she was. She should have been more. It's just like the situation they were in was so dangerous where people were trying to murder them and they never seemed to take it serious. Like as soon as they're yeah. away from the danger, they're just like, oh, we're just hanging out. This is normal. Da, da, da. You know, none of us are detectives other than Val Kilmer, but let's pretend and uh, take each other's theories as legitimate. And yeah. that was dumb. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm sad because I was really looking forward to this movie. I've wanted to watch it for a long time, and uh, it's I, not, it's not good. I had I had zero idea what it was about. I didn't look at anything ahead of time, so I didn't have any expectations going into it. Mm-hmm. And then I was just uh, whelmed. It's not <laughs> overwhelmed or underwhelmed. Just <laughs> whelmed. Well, our next episode. Should be in a couple days. It's going to be on the disaster artist, James Franco's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you even call it? Biopic? Is that right? Biopic. Biopic. Uh, is that about Tommy Wiseau? Yeah. Was that? Was, would, is that what you would consider the disaster artist? Because it's more about the making know. of the movie, right? Right. Yeah. It's just the behind the scenes look. No. I don't know. So this will be my first time seeing that, which I'm I'm pretty excited about. Uh, it's it's good. I like it. Uh, if you've seen the room, then I definitely recommend the. I mean, I, I recommend the Disaster Artist either way. Mm. But I feel like if you do see the room, it definitely makes it even better. It makes more sense. It you know, it does because watching the Disaster Artist, if I hadn't seen the room, there'd be so many moments that just I would be so lost. Yeah. But but you know having like I said having seen the room it definitely makes more sense. Um, so it's consider it they're they're like it's like a companion piece. Yeah, you should see both. Um, but yeah, if you want to listen to our thoughts on that over on Patreon, you can hear them right now. Everything on Patreon for a dollar, 
comes out two weeks in advance, and you also get to help decide who has to pay the punishment at the end of the month. Uh, yeah. Whoever has the least amount of votes is the one who has to do that. So if you go vote for Alan, you can help save me from having to pay the punishment again. See, so this episode is coming out, let's see, June 19th, 2046, and I have won every single month. It's actually June 24th. So let's keep that going. What? Oh, sorry, I forgot we took that week off. <laughs> uh, yeah, so go vote for me, because I feel like I have the capacity or the capability to choose worse movies for you to watch than I, for you to make no me way. watch. No. You think do you, do you already have one picked out if for if you ever by chance win? I've got a couple floating around in my head. I haven't quite decided on one yet cuz I'm not confident it's ever going to happen. <laughs> you don't want to get your hopes up. Yeah, at the time of recording this, Taylor has only lost once and that was for the Ghost Pepper or the Carolina Reaper. Oh uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I you know what I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, that's weird. You're okay. Didn't with... have to wax my legs. Didn't oh. have to wear a mustache. Yeah, I don't even know which one I hate more. They're all. Uh, I love them both equally. <laughs> yeah, the gummy, the jelly beans were the least bad. Yeah, I would have been okay losing that one. The uh, the worst part about that, not even like. So I had to eat a bunch of gross jelly beans. Uh, the grossness of them was the, wasn't even the worst part. It was, if I would have eaten that many, the same amount of good jelly beans, I would have been equally same. as miserable. Yeah. I felt so gross. I was like so sick of jelly beans. It sh- should make you eat like a three pound bag of this sugar free gummy bears. <laughs> That's okay. I will pass on that one, sir. Uh, right, but we'll yeah. See. We'll, we'll be back. Uh, follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod. Like us on Facebook. And, uh, go check out what our sponsors are doing. Boss-play.com. And, uh, yeah. Thanks again for listening.